and that's were... the moment I got a goosebump. How much you were making for the? From like two hundred to five hundred dollars a day. I, um, Work it out. For me, I did not have that kind of savings, and that was holding me back from the opening up a business. So what I did, guys, I'm so sorry, but which I don't recommend to anyone. Hi everyone, thank you for watching us. I'm Adia, I love connecting to people, I love interviewing people. So today we will be actually connecting to my friends and asking questions about his life, Max. And by the way guys, um, this is a very young channel, this is one of our first interviews. Please support us, uh, subscribe, smash the like button. I promise you, we're gonna come up with a lot of great content. We're gonna be interviewing interesting people, regular people, local people, regular life, immigrants, businessmen, anyone. So please stay tuned and let's go. Adventure ahead. Yes. So Max is our first uh, ever guest in our channel. He's a um, simple regular guy who immigrated from Tajikistan and got very successful. He's the owner of two high-end barbershop, co-owner of a coffee shop, and just a dreamer, achiever. So today we're going to interview him. It's very interesting how um, the simple guy from Tajikistan in very young age immigrated to New York, New York City to United States, and you came when you were 16, right? When I, yeah, exactly, when I was 16. Yeah. Okay, and how, how did you feel like when you first came? You were a very young guy without any family, no support. Did you know English? Yes, I went um, back home. I went to a private school, which is a Turkish school. Mm. So um, I don't want to say my English was perfect, but then I had a good base. What was like, what you were feeling when you were immigrating? Like, were you happy or were you feeling like sad you were living in your country? Or you were more like, finally, I got to be in opportunity, please. Yeah. Where is like a freedom, American yeah. dream. So yeah. how did you feel Yeah, about most it? likely the second option you have mentioned. Um, the first time... Uh, when I find out that I want to make my way out to the United States, I was nine years old. Yes. Nine years old? Nine years old. I approached Consciously? Yeah, consciously. Like yeah, I you have... knew you want to be in the United States? Yes, for sure. I already just, uh, made my mind and I came one day to my father and I said, hey, I'm sorry, but I was born in the wrong place. I think I, I need to find my way out and I, I don't belong here. Our mentality is a little bit tough. So... Uh, since I was a kid and watching TVs, like uh, one of the inspiration, it may be weird these days to say that, but then uh, Michael Jackson was one of my inspiration. And then when I see uh, a person like Michael Jackson uh, being from different color and changing his color and then still people, you know, like accepting him the way he is. And then he showed that there is a better, better place in the world exists so mm -hmm. I can be at. So that's why I made my way to America and made, made a decision at nine years old, uh, make my way already somehow uh, to America and leave my country. Uh, for that reason, uh, I chose America because um, it was, um, hey, uh, American dream. I wanted to, you know, uh, to be part of an American dream. And thankfully, uh, that's what am I doing these days, you know. Not a lot of people familiar with Tajikistan. Uh -huh. It's uh, as I know, it's a very small country. Can you tell us in a couple words no. how is Tajikistan and what is it like? So we have kind of context and preview of it. Yeah, yeah sure. Tajikistan it's in um, it's located in Central Asia, and mm -hmm. uh, roughly I would say about eight million population. Big cities are doing well, but then like. Sidewise, it's not so good. The economy, it's not in a great shape, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing our best. Uh, we don't have much of a resources in our country. The main resources is uh, uh, agriculture. Agriculture, That's, okay, yeah. farming. And can I ask you, how your parents were okay to let uh -huh. their son um, to go to the United States, which is like, Super far away from Central Asia. Yeah, especially like in 16 15, years old. 15 hours of flight. How? Like 16 mm -hmm. years old son. Mm -hmm. I have a son, so mm -hmm. I don't know how I would let him go. Yeah. Like at yeah. very young. You are basically a teenager, yeah. you know? Well, I was, you know, um, since I was a uh, 
since I was young and uh, like around 13 years of age, I was already uh, kind of independent. I already was um, uh, doing business and trying to already make money and stuff like that. I was. So you always had your entrepreneurship spirit. You yeah, say. you know what? Yeah, I wasn't thinking it that well, way back you, then, but I then now I started realizing that, that yeah. I had this from the beginning. Actually, you were already creating at that time, like, at that time. different ways for you. Yeah, to develop. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would, I would actually buy a rabbit in one place and bring it to another place and sell <laughs> wow. it for more and yeah. stuff like that. And it's entrepreneurship. Yeah, and uh, yeah, pretty much like that. That's amazing, and. Can we talk about more about your hairstylist experience and how did you come to it? When did you decide that you want to become a hairstylist? Like, mm. when yeah. uh, did you have like something for beauty? You like creating like beauty, or you like hair, or you were thinking, oh, this is good opportunity to make money <clears throat> instead of going for a college, yeah. let's say for five years. Yeah. What well, was your motivation? <clears throat> um, pretty much, it? you know what? <laughs> that's funny. That's um, because uh, you pretty much answered all you, uh, all, all the things you asked. Um, because um, it's a combination of all of it, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the why I jumped in into beauty business, um, it's again. It ha I have to go back to uh, like um, back to my uh, childhood again. Uh, when I, whenever I was taking a shower, uh, sometimes you know. Um, uh, I would just uh, mix out after shower. I would love to always mix out things like a couple perfumes or something, yeah. or be, and then always uh, mix the perfumes and apply it on me, and then be like, "Oh, how it smells!" and come out from the bathroom and be like, "Mom, how oh, do I yeah. smell?" and she'd be like, "Wow, well, what kind of smell is that? Where'd you yeah. get it?" and I'm like, "Oh, I made it myself." You know, it's not like I made it myself. I just mixed it on my, yeah. on my own. So, I guess I had. So you always um, like to take care of yourself, first of all, and yeah. then it kind of came from... Absolutely, yeah, probably I had that. Uh, and then once I came to the United States, and uh, I just started pursuing that because, like you said, I also uh, went to a college and then uh, for computer science, and I, I realized it's, this is not really what I want to do because I noticed this much more... Uh, people who's passionate about it, you know, mm -hmm. more than I am. And yeah. I'm like, okay, this guy, for example, has an opportunity at this field. Uh, me, not really, because you if I lacked it, yes, I did, but not so much, you know, mm -hmm. not to the point like I want to... Um, Devoted yourself. Like yeah, it. exactly, fully to it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So for that reason, decided to go to uh, uh, the, the, the hair school because uh, that was quicker. Mm -hmm. I could finish it within a year, and then I, I'm set to actually make the money. And plus, as I said earlier, I have an interest, you know, mm -hmm. that, which is the most important thing. So this is amazing how you understood right away that it's not yours, mm -hmm. and you stop pursuing it, you know, instead of going for it. <clears throat> yeah. How a lot of people do, they're like, okay, anyway, I'll go for it, computer science, it's a future, and they just do it. I'm amazed that you actually realized in early age that you don't want to do it, and you stopped doing it, and yeah. you went to a different way. Um, so, wh where was your first salon that you were working for? Wow, good question. Very, very good question. The first salon I worked is the most low-end barbershop I have ever found. Actually, I was um, uh, damn it, I, I don't well, remember. What location? It was, it, was, uh, it was Queens. Queens. Okay. Queens. It was Queens, um, and um, place uh, called actually Emporio Barbershop. Okay. Yeah, pretty good name actually. Maybe they they can see you. Yeah. <laughs> so the they will be like, oh, wow, it's a max. <laughs> haircut was four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Okay, if it's haircut four ninety nine, how much you were making from uh, four ninety nine? I was, believe me or not, <laughs> to me that 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 money money wasn't much important. So you were after experience. After experience, okay. exactly. I was big time after experience. All I needed to do is just you know after school. Like you, I felt like nobody needs me, you know, because I'm new and everyone knows I'm from school. Yeah. Everyone gonna be like, okay. And you were pretty young at that age. Yeah, you I was about probably, like what, eighteen years old. Eighteen years like old. It's 
So guys, 18 years old, already knowing what you want to do and where you want to be working, it's amazing. And already <laughs> going after through experience. Yeah. So um, my next question is, where did you live? Did you live also in Queens? Uh, yes, I, I lived everywhere. But at, at that moment, at the beginning, no, I was actually living in Brooklyn. I was commuting to Queens. And, and then, how long was your commute? Like, maybe an hour, maybe an hour, hour, maybe an hour, hour yeah. Two hour. yeah. Yeah, yeah, hour, hour and a half, because you have to transfer the trains and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, was it hard for you to find your first job with Environment, or <sighs> yes, it, it was so very hard. Even though I wanted to get a job, even like in, no salary, in, in, like, even so, even low paid was hard yeah, to it, get. It, right? like, even can, can you imagine if like low pay, but then still people don't want to take you because they're like know you from school. They want to take you, but they want to take advantage of you. <laughs> yeah, this is what a lot of, I feel like, um, people who are like immigrant going through, especially in New York City, and even people who came from different yeah. uh, states, mm. they go, they're going through taking advantage of process, you know? So, yeah. Um, and how are your adjustments for your new life? Uh, was New York welcoming to you? Maybe Good question. Uh, at uh, at the beginning, oh my God, I have to say, whew, what kind geez, of relationship was it? That was so difficult, so difficult. I I have to be honest. My first till so two thousand six till two thousand thirteen, um, I had a nightmare. You had a nightmare. I was living truly a nightmare. Uh, at the same time, with right now, I understand that all my nightmares were an experience and helped me out throughout my life. You know, all immigrants are experienced this. Yeah. But then um, I have been through very, very like um, tough time. roller coaster life um, because uh, I had moments where I had no roof. I had moments where I had no house. You yeah. know, and I was really in September. You know, in like freaking February in uh, New York being without a house it's super cold here and during I february know. and like literally you know came out of like to be honest from homeless to this point like wow. life got pushed me all the way down first mm -hmm. all the way like to the point like couldn't afford an apartment seriously not even a being a i couldn't even afford a room that bad wow. uh, but then hey uh you see uh, like uh, i had a vision i had a goal that i was going for and then uh, I just nothing could stop me I guess because I did not want to be a homeless I had uh, I had a dream that uh, has been striving. given to me I felt like it has been given to me for a reason that I need to reach it you know it would always knock in my door <laughs> by saying knock in my door knock in my head you know <laughs> so yeah. so you would always call me and I would always pursue it and then uh, I'm still after it my dreams are so big to the point that it looks funny you know, sounds funny. But you're still young, so yeah. uh, we'll see you. I'm going to take an interview from Max in 10 years, and yeah. probably maybe. In a different oh. place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I take it? Ms. Basirka? So, and when did you start to make, like, real money? When did you feel like, wow? I am starting making real money through your uh, yes. hairstyle job, through yeah. barbering. Yeah. What was like the first moments and reactions when you started to making like real money? Uh, once I finished the school, okay, I got into the cheap places, barbershops. And then in 2013, uh, this is the time I already got a lot of experience mm -hmm. at hair cutting. That's why I mentioned until 2013, I had a hard time. Yeah. And in 2013, I started applying in a places like high end places. High end places because I started feeling like, wow, I know a lot now. Okay. I know a lot now. So maybe I should start applying to the places, maybe not $10, $10 $15, I because I did all of those mm -hmm. stages. I started from $4.99 all the way work till $25 places. And then I'm like, okay, so it's time to maybe step up the game. And because I always want to cut celebrity. Wow. Yeah. I always want to cut some somebody famous, you know, because 
I'm working hard, and I was hoping also to meet some hardworking person, damn it, who is successful. You know? Yeah, <laughs> someone who can also motivate you, give you inspiration. Exactly. And I, for that reason, I need to hang out in a different areas, yeah. with different people, you know, different mindsets and stuff like that. So I just started looking places where, of uh, like a uh, high end places who could afford actually a little bit of more hair, like a pricier haircut, not mm-hmm. necessarily. Uh, it it does it needs to be like a just I want to pay high like a high premium haircut and I just want to be in that place. Of course, it has to match personality, quality of yeah. hair. There's a lot of things involved for that price. Uh, for that for that reason, I thought maybe the mentality of a person will be different too. So I started applying in high end places and finally got a, a, a interviewed with like three four high end places and then uh, out of nowhere, all of them wanted to hire me. Like, literally, uh-huh. anywhere I went to interview, all of them wanted to hire uh-huh. me. And now, from, like, not having a job, I had a hard time picking one. Picking which one I want to go now. And then uh, there was jobs, like, I'm like, okay, uh, I can't make freaking... Some jobs was literally, like, I could make from, like, $200 to, like, $500 a day. Wow. From, imagine, from, like, making nothing wow. to, like, making... A day when I was just making it a week. And right away, I calculated in my head how fast I can grow. You understand? Right now, plus I work hard. I know, like, I will just work nonstop. I'm like, oh, my God. And then I I right away applied to the job, and I I called her. I said, hey, so when can I start? She said, okay, but you have to, we have to train. We have to go through the training stage and all that. I said, sure, no problem. I came and I, I already knew everything pretty much. And then um, they also, of course, they adjusted me towards the things they wanted me to be mm-hmm. uh, adjusted. And uh, I learned that within like two weeks. And then that's it. And I started working already uh, as a, you know, individual uh, hairstylist, uh, like a personal contractor, basically. Uh, and I was just, uh, you know, growing nonstop. From that point, nothing and- could stop me. I was just freaking gates was open the roads was open life wow. was life was Let, just go get it you know <laughs> so uh the door for totally new life was open for you yes successful new prosperity new page, absolutely yeah. yes and let's just say how much you were making for the from like from- 200 to 500 dollars a day Wow, it is. It's even nowadays. It's even now. It's impossible. Almost two hundred to five hundred dollars, and that was two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. <laughs> Thirteen, fourteen, yes. And wow, guys, through being a barber, like through being a hairstylist, and just staying pa- patient and yeah, consistent, working hard, yes, working hard, and um. So after that, let's say how how long you were working for that for someone in the oh. high end how long uh-huh. you were um so the thing is with me company. you know i'm not a very regarding when it comes to the business and working for someone i'm a person like not many people can actually tolerate me <laughs> you know mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah very uh you say you would say you have a difficult personality? No, I don't have a difficult personality. It's just or for some yeah. reason, since I have that, maybe oh. that leadership. Yeah. And then uh, I don't even ask, a, let's say, the place I work. I never would ask a boss what to do. You already I, I would just do it for the boss, basically. Actually mm-hmm. help the boss. Okay. Let's say I would just come and the boss, let's say, didn't even tell me to sweep. I will sweep. I will do the windows. I will, like, just... Just do it for myself because I, anywhere I work, for some reason I see this like mine. I never thought I'll go. I'm doing it for someone mm-hmm. because, uh, as I said, uh, I started hard, you know. So you go with all your heart and soul. Just do it for myself and do it like as your own. Yes, as my own. Anything I do, to be honest, literally doesn't matter. Even though I go and work for someone, mm-hmm. I still I feel like I'm doing it for myself. By the end of the day, yes, maybe I am benefiting somebody else also, but then I don't have to forget in the first place I'm benefiting me. Exactly. Doesn't matter. That, that's Doesn't a great matter. quality. Yeah. So I just, since I'm doing it for myself, I just want to do the best and learn a new experience while I'm mm-hmm. doing something. 
you know I just don't want to sit and wait for someone to tell me for example do this and even these days I don't even tell my employees to do anything I want them to figure it out actually because mm -hmm. that will help him himself or her herself to yeah. you know to grow exactly to prosper in the future so um as I understood, you kind of outgrow your place where you were making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And when did you decide that, okay, I am already too big for this. Mm -hmm. I am kind of, I have to grow mm -hmm. and I have to take a step mm -hmm. to open my own place. Mm -hmm. So when was it and how did you feel it? You should start. When was it? How, how it happened? How it happened, basically, yes. Wow. You know what? I think I wouldn't open up a business unless um, circumstances lead me to this point. Uh, because, uh, as I said, I got into a conflict with the owner and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But that in the past. Um, but then I needed a bigger resource of money to open up a business. It's not okay. now. It's a different level because you uh, you don't just change a job. You know, it's yeah. not just you go and look for a job yeah. and you get a job. Now it's different like, hardship now it's yes. like a lot of unknown stuff that you are going to get <laughs> come across with uh and you'd be like oh do i really want it or not but in my case you know thanks to of course um uh, to the people who had around me like my brother who would m motivate me like hey you know you can do this come on do it i needed more financial stability i would say you know okay, so cool. for that reason i did not have enough uh uh, resources, you know, resources and finance all together. But then uh, I have to say, I did something crazy. Success, it equals risk. Yeah. There is no risk, there is no success. You got to do a combo of two in order to reach success. Mm -hmm. um, so for that reason, <laughs> it may it's going to sound crazy, but then uh, one day I see like uh, how much I have uh, in terms of savings and then uh, I got to the point like uh, I calculated how much money I truly need to open up a business Even then I did not have enough money because opening up a business just getting a location and just you don't count one month You know you count several years yes. just in case because what if one year doesn't yeah. go wrong? What if the second year doesn't go wrong for that reason you have to have a savings not mm -hmm. just the savings you need to have a decent savings yeah so and uh for me i did not have that kind of savings and that was holding me back from the opening up a business so what i did guys i'm so sorry but which i don't recommend to anyone okay. um, I, you know what i i just i just put all my money together and i went gamble okay. i gambled my money I went uh, to, you, it's going to sound stupid. You mean you gambled your money like a casino? In casino. Okay. I went casino. and I doubled my money. And what I did, I doubled my money and I right uh, away opened up a business. Okay. You doubled your money and for that money, you opened your business. Exactly. Okay. The, that's very interesting. I've never heard of it. Yeah, that's weird. But then... The, and I'm because glad listen, that it I worked had, out. Yes, I did take a lose, risk. Yes, you didn't lose your money. And um, thankfully, no. Listen, I mean, uh, it was difficult. Believe me, I had I had days I would lose, but then uh, the moment I won big, I stopped. Okay. And I reinvested it instead of gamble again. Yeah. I what I did, I chose a smarter way because I knew if I'm going to be keep wow. on gambling, I will lose it. That that takes a discipline too. You know? I think that's. Number that's one, a, yeah, that's discipline, discipline because uh, people usually make money and then they go and lose it again, you know. Yeah, that's, that's a cycle, but I'm so glad it worked out for you. Yeah, and, yeah. Wow, mm. I, that's unexpected, like an right? unexpected <laughs> turn. Um, did you have a business plan? Did I have a business you plan? Opened that? Of course, of course, uh, business did plan, you? the moment especially, uh, I knew I'm going to open up a business, mm -hmm. but then I did not have money. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was building the savings, all the thing I was doing is all was about business plan. Researching. Researching. is a lot of research. Is, uh, 
just even the name itself, to be honest, the name is the biggest, the number one factor. Yeah, that was my actually next question. Yeah. How did you come up with the name? It's um, very unique. Yeah. Let's remind, uh, the, the name of the salon called Man's Best Haircut. Yeah, very, Which is very, very like, Googleable name. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's yeah. what people probably engine guys, friendly. Yeah, engine friendly, like <laughs> for CEO search, it's like it's best. the best name. Yeah. So, how? So, and so, so, 2013, 14, when it wasn't no um, social was media thing. or like Google search, it wasn't that like right it was now. It's big, but in you know, like every day it's getting yeah. bigger, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, at the beginning it was hard, and then uh, plus uh, my financial situation wasn't mm -hmm. great, you know. I mean, yeah. I'm a new business owner and stuff like that. I couldn't afford uh, PR or a media or like anyone who would work separately on like my media things separately. Oh, like marketing. Just marketing, mean. exactly. Just to develop me overall, basically. That's another resource, you know. You so need. you were fully self started on your own only like you were you were the one who is like building everything you didn't even have the website any everything i literally did like every single thing which is here yeah. uh computer science came handy <laughs> you know uh, the yeah. first year of my year yeah that i could apply finally <laughs> and then they helped me towards that and then uh use the knowledges that i, I have to you know develop like uh, searching search engines and stuff like that and, um, I had the knowledge about it actually and um, I worked on the website on my own I I, find, I looked up people how much they charge and I'm, I'm like oh shoot I cannot afford paying someone yeah. every month $2,000 for my website let's say I'm like it's too much money you know yeah. and um I was just working on, on it myself, little by little. I was making mistakes. Sometimes we, people, even client, would call me like, "Hey, your uh, the, your click bottom stays on the in the corner of the screen." You're like, this. I'm like, no way! I would call you like, oh shit, and I have to fix it. You know, wow. it was awkward. You know, but then it helped me to improve every yeah. time. Um, so for that reason, I needed to choose a name would help me without. You know, Without any extra marketing, you mean, or yeah, extra, extra extra person who would help yeah. me, I'd say. And then I need to sit and come out like a name that markets itself. Wow, you got it right. That's and genius. I would just sit and think, 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 think. What would it be? And I'm like, hold on a minute. If I would search a haircut, what would I search? I would not search a worst haircut. Yeah, I would search a best haircut. And I'm like, I will be cutting what? Men's hair. Huh. Let me see. Men's best haircut. I type in, all types of great haircuts comes out. Ooh. But there is nothing, barbershop or any school or nothing exists. I'm like, deal is closed. <laughs> Ta-da. That's the it. moment you fixed that, it. And that's you're... the moment I got a goosebump. Wow. This is the moment I got a goosebump you, because... You thought that you were in a right time. I not only... I freaking, you know what? I I got a goosebump because it's like I find a lottery ticket. You know? Uh, when I typed it in and I see wow. this name available everywhere, even in the domain name.com. When people, to, in order to get yeah. .com, you pay extra money. I know. But this one was available. Wow. I am like no freaking way, and I was the triple checking everywhere Yahoo, every single freaking search engine out there. I was researching. I'm like no way. I came. I right away hired an accountant, and I called her, and I'm like, hey, can you search and see if there's a business exist now? You forget about the website yeah. now. Now I have to find out if there's a business exist. LLC, you mean, or Inc? No, not even business exists. Wow. I am like, yeah, this is meant to be. Uh, this is mine. <laughs> I wow. got it. And the moment I got. The domain and everything. Do you know how many phone calls I got? Do you know how many people wanted to take my name away from me? People were offering me a franchise. Franchise. Wow. In order to take the business out of my hand. So I could, if I do franchise, it means I will get basically yeah. like 5 10% from every business. But, but it's not, you, you it's are not, not, not it's mine. Oh, you are but not I will be owner. getting the 10 yeah. 15%. You know what I mean? new franchising opens you, you i will get percentage out. yes but yeah. wow it's an amazing story yeah. you're <laughs> making more interesting and interesting it's getting so um at that moment when you were working on your first 
business is anybody helped you like mentor or anyone like um, did you have any particular person i had only two person i have to mention for sure who truly truly helped me out with my first first steps to get the business running um i have to mention my brother mm -hmm. you know that's truly 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 pushed me uh like to get the business done and get on running business uh that was my brother and uh one of my best friend fred uh mm -hmm. he truly helped me out because uh, i did not have even money to build the place you know i i i put every resource i had and then something i couldn't afford they would come and help me to build it together actually wow. we will like literally build the place together yes how long did it take you to start making a profit it took me almost two years so within uh from the year to year and a half i had a lot of obstacles to the point like um like i said you see that's why you need to have in business savings because there's going to be a moment where it may not be very profitable you know to the point like you have to actually feed the business mm -hmm. like i needed to borrow money i got to the point that i needed money to actually pay the business to con continue because this is the only thing I knew, and this is the only thing I believed, and um, this is the only way I could make it work. And then, plus, I already spent so much money, so much yeah, energy, it would be so hard to give up. So hard. And then, almost two years, I'm in business and still not profitable, and actually downgraded, and lost mm -hmm. my money and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I did borrow a little bit of money, and that money actually helped me out to get back to to my feet. And then. When I, once I return my money, that whatever I needed to buy, or whatever I borrowed, I um, returned it way more actually. Where did you borrow? Like a bank or? Uh, from no, from the person. From the person. Yes. Okay. Obviously, after that hardship, your business went up. When did you decide to open second one? Uh, the second one. Okay, so. Second one the, is the location where start, we are right now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. All good. Well, after I opened up, uh, when I decided to open up a second location, that's mm -hmm. true. Uh, well, after I actually, you know, prospered, uh, after the first one, I uh, start finally got to the point it, it, be, uh, it became profitable. Okay. I decided to immediately uh, thinking of other businesses. And then my goal now was not just one barbershop, but then my goal was 10 barbershops. Okay. Wow. My goal was 10 barbershops. I wanted to open up across the country. I wanted to open up one in California. You know, mm -hmm. I already had a place actually in um, uh, Santa Barbara. I almost mm -hmm. opened up a place in Santa Barbara. I wow. literally went, look up but, the location, okay. everything I had wow. already almost set up. But then along the way, um, things happened that it's I couldn't open it because... Uh, I wanted, I wanted to also, you know, to just run uh, multiple businesses, you also need strong people around you, yeah. like strong managers and team. stuff like that, who you can trust and stuff. But then sometimes, you know, you talk to people, sometimes people like they get um, inspired, they do want to do things with you, but then along the way something happens. You know, and then they like they pick up or they're not sure, and then that also messes your plans too course. because you understand that in order, you know, in order to succeed in this life, um, besides your hard working, you need other people's hard work too. You know, mm -hmm. it's just combination of many hands and many yeah. <laughs> many brains. You, you need needed. a team, basically. I need a team. Well, Not see. everyone want want to do the dream you are dreaming. Yeah, not, you know what not I mean? everyone has the same, the same dream. Exactly. So for that reason, I lowered my expectation mm -hmm. and start expecting, you know, nothing from people. If I want to do something along the way, someone's joins join in. And if somebody else actually shows me their own personal interest, then I will work now. But before I was just pushing people to work with me, you know, I was just not even pushing because I... I, I would always see opportunity and I always wanted to help somebody else mm -hmm. also and I always want other person to also, also succeed with me okay. because I'm not pushing myself to downgrade you know I'm pushing mm -hmm. myself towards success and then if I ask someone it means I don't want you to downgrade obviously I, since I want myself to succeed and then um, for that reason whoever joins in to my ideas mm -hmm. I can make it work faster better because I have more people and then if not, it will be a harder way 
to reach my success because it's just me, you know. Wow. What is your uh, focus the most right now in your business and in your salon? What are you focusing the most? It could be like a team or your client, building a clientele or promotion or marketing. What's your focus in it now? Uh, in well, two salons. Yeah, good questions. Right now, to be honest, uh, if specifically since you're asking a question about salon, my focus would be obviously it, it is uh, marketing. It's in the first place right now because everything has to do with marketing right now. And, and I'm in a position where I can't afford a marketing right now, to mm -hmm. be honest. Uh, plus, I'm a little bit shifted out from this a little bit uh, these days because, uh, you know, we have been through the times where pandemic happened. Yeah. It shattered us a lot. You know, we it, it, it actually it took my focus out of the business a little mm -hmm. bit because it made me think a little bit differently because okay. I have to be much more diverse now, not mm -hmm. just barbershop. Yeah. And because of that, I got involved into different finance I have to be diversified. If so, what if something happens with the barbershop and I, do I know anything else? No, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I needed to develop other skills, and those skills will help me even run the yeah. barbershop too. Because if I will develop my skills on other things, it means my fi my finance will grow, and then if I have more finance, uh, uh, more uh, more money to invest in my barbershop, in the other things I wanted to make it better, so mm -hmm. I could do it. Um, yeah, for that reason, I'm more focused in finance in order to help my other businesses as well. So, as I understood, COVID changed you and your perspective. Yeah. But how about how it affected your salon, particularly how, like your business? Big time, because um, as you know, we were closed fully, fully closed for like five months. You wow. know, and but you still had to pay for rent all, all of it, all of it. Like, all, all like expenses all the expenses so still my internet my lights whatever business runs mm -hmm. but you still need to pay but the business doesn't make money can you imagine mm -hmm. in america and then it's not one location when you have several locations and then you still need to feed them all you know it's not many people understands it but then did you lost a lot a lot literally lost, lost lot. pretty much believe me or not i got almost to the ground and Almost how about right. government? Did government help Government you? did help me a little bit, you know, very little bit. Did it cover a lot? No. You know, I'm a person like, I don't like to borrow money. I don't, yeah. for some, I'm, I have a little bit of weird mentality. Maybe that's what Soviet Union's mentality. I don't believe in free money. I believe in hard work and making my own money. And every time I get free money, I'm afraid of it. Yeah. And something will come out and something mm -hmm. will happen for that. For that reason... Hey, here I am. I didn't take. I didn't use. Believe it or not, more than government who helped me is my, our clients. You know, we opened up a GoFund account. Mm -hmm. They helped us big time. That helped towards the rent. You want to say thank you to your clients? Yes, they absolutely. Watching? Thank you so much for all our clients, friends, family who really support us during extremely hard time like pandemic, as you guys know. You guys truly helped us. That's why, for that reason, we are here today still delivering a great haircut, the one you guys actually needed. Yes. Thank you so much. We love you all, guys. Thank you, Mazda's Best Haircut clients. And uh, speaking of clients, who is your clients right now? What's your audience like? Um, can I just tell? Usually, the haircut here, it's like a minimum of $60. Yes. So, who is your client? It's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, listen, um, we cut celebrities, we cut models, we cut a lot mm -hmm. of freelancers, we cut a lot of artists uh, who actually, uh, and then on, we also, hey, we're in a prime location, Williamsburg location, which it's, um, these days is not cheap to leave, you know. Yeah, Williamsburg, let's remind, it's one of the trendiest probably places in New York right now yeah. to be. It's all trends like, comes from here. All the trends, all the like artists, the famous models, and a lot of celebrities try to relocate to Williamsburg right yes, now. Yes, absolutely. So. Absolutely true. And I've seen um, something on social media about Impractical Jokers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just tell me what was it? And Yeah, Impractical Jokers, it's a, it's a, it's it's a TV show. And um, they're very big on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, on TV, on TV, yes. on uh, they're on through TV, by the way. Um, they have also a movie. 
uh, Impractical Jokers movie. You mm-hmm. guys can check it out. Highly recommend you. It's awesome. It's a comedy. Uh, it's comedians. Uh, and uh, yes, I cut um, Sal. I cut Brian Q. Wow. I pretty much I cut them all. Um, and then um, yeah, they have led me to. Um, lots of much more success, obviously, you know, but lots of people know them, uh, and they helped me definitely help me out big time to develop even more and get my name even out there. And, uh, and they even mentioned me on the TV shows, which is wow. amazing, which is really big. Yes. Congrats. Thank you. And talking about your earlier, you mentioned that you own coffee shop. Yeah. You are actually co-owner of the coffee yeah. shop and bake shop. Can yeah. we talk a little bit about it? And where is it? How did it start? It? And it's totally different spheres. I know in the beginning you say you were working for yeah, coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that uh, you started your barbershop, why you didn't open a um, third barbershop? Why you decided to invest in bake shop? Yeah. So um, regarding the barbershop, I, as I said, I was actually craving mm-hmm. for one, and then the plans uh, changed because lots of people uh, make different minds and stuff, and then I need managers and stuff like yeah. that, and then not many people can just uh, get out from New York and start living yeah. in California. It's not easy. I, I get it, you know? You, you need a strong team. You, you need a very strong team, yes, uh, and who is also willing to sacrifice sometimes, yeah. you know? Um, but not many people are out there like that. Uh, well, that's why for that reason I'm like, okay, maybe I should diversify. Like I said, I mm-hmm. diversify and open up a coffee shop because I worked in a coffee shop and I knew it could be a profitable. And this is something yeah. that's like reminds my childhood. This is how I started. I'm like, oh, this is how I started. Now I have it. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, I just wanted to open up a coffee shop. The opportunity came out, and then I knew a person um, uh, who's actually good at running, you know, the coffee shop, big mm-hmm. shop. Her name is Amy. She's doing well, you know, phenomenal uh, work. And then she was working for a, a Toby's Coffee. She was running it and she was managing it. And I'm like, oh wow, what a perfect opportunity! We can, you know, co- collaborate together yeah. and then actually create something amazing. And um, so far, so good. And then, uh, unfortunately, after we opened up again, pandemic happened, yes. all that crazy stuff. But now we are again. actually coming out very, very strong. strong. Yes. Wow. And how the partnership is going? So before, you always been on your own. You were yeah, yeah. yeah. And now you have to be like yeah. partners with someone and talk out things. How is it going? Like Partnership, okay. it's, you know what, partnership, it's not easy. It never was, and I have heard that many times too. Uh, but uh, we are trying to make it work, and uh, the only way to make it work it's not it's trusting another person, mm-hmm. and you're trusting in your partner. Mm-hmm. And um, for that reason, I guess we started in the first place because that was a trust in the first place. Okay. And then uh, to make that work, you gotta continue trusting the person. And uh, that trust should lead you to success, you know, um, because if you don't trust, that's where everything starts collapsing, actually. Any advice you can give for young entrepreneurs, for immigrants, for somebody who just came from a small city, from states, and trying to find their way out yeah. in New York? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, New York can be very challenging, guys. New York is tough. And uh, there's so many people also know that a lot of immigrants come here and they, they like to take advantage of immigrants. So be aware of that, I have to say, so you don't get, you know, scammed by a lot of people out here. Um, and also in America, it's easy actually to achieve your goal because all tools are available here. And all you need is just to reach out to those tools and make them work for you. If you just just sit and dream, unfortunately, nothing will happen. Maybe you will be creative towards your dream because you're thinking of it too much. But actually moving towards the dream, it's a completely different story. Um, in order to achieve a dream, you gotta you got to move, you got to go, you got to just do things towards your dream and this is the only way you reach it so any dream you have like i said earlier it has been given to you for a reason never forget about it 
It has been given to you for a reason. So you the only one can create it. You the only one create your dream because you truly know your dream. Yes. And in order to reach your dream, guys, also you need to protect your dream because a lot of discourage comes along the way in your life and discourages you and takes you out of your plan, out of your dream and leads you to another way. But then yeah, always don't, remind yourself. Don't let anyone to get in your way and or stop still your you. Dream. Or still your dream. Yeah. Still believe in yourself. Believe. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you. And my question would be next. What would you say to 16-year-old Max who just came to New York? Uh -huh. And what would you say to him right now? I would say I wouldn't came to this country super early. I wanted to come here a little bit later, actually. Mm -hmm. I would love to be here maybe when you were like you know what maybe like around 23 24 up to 21 for sure because I think I could have eliminated a lot of a lot of stupidity a lot of hardship I don't want to say stupid because it is stupidity because I was young and I didn't know my ways around mm -hmm. but it also you know it was an experience but um don't rush to come here guys first get yeah. as many experiences as you can uh, learn the language nicely, get get some job, get some experience, then come here in yeah. order to make it better. Get some confidence in yourself. Get confidence, exactly. So. Then come here. Don't rush just, I want to go to America. First, you know what? You need to deserve America. Yeah. That's what it is. And what do you think you would be doing right now in Tajikistan if you wouldn't actually come to the United States? What would your life look like there? That's a good question. I cannot even imagine. Maybe I would be still a businessman. You would be still yeah, a businessman, Yes, 100%. You think? yes. Okay. 100%. I started already, yeah. Like, I was already doing some businesses, said, you know, and then I just quit everything. I came here. And thank you so much. That was very interesting. Yeah. Very um, Absolutely. big and very complex and yeah. very exciting. And now I have a, a quick question. Huh? You have to answer quick. It's yeah. called Blitz Questions. What are your top three qualities? Um, well, my three top qualities, it's um, never give up attitude. Mm -hmm. And um, risk taker. Okay. And uh, the one third more. one. Yeah, one more. It's... Dream achiever, I guess. Yeah, dreamer, I would say. Yeah. You are such a dreamer. Yeah. Um, who is your ultimate inspiration? Oh, oh uh, huh, interesting. You know what? Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie? Yeah. Okay, so the next session was favorite book. I oh, guess the, 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 yeah, it's for the book. And as a person, too, like, I want to be a, like the person who I know mm -hmm. in my life who exists. It okay. will be like two, three person I can name. It's like uh, uh, Elon Musk, one okay. of them, uh, and uh, Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is the two so far I'm like really into it. Inspired. Yes. Uh, Warren you, Buffett. Also. Warren Buffett. Okay, yeah. investor. How would you describe New York in a couple words? Let's say two words, like two like big words. Hyper crazy. Hyper crazy, okay. <laughs> yeah, it is. New York is crazy. Even sitting right now, it's, it's like so many things going on out yes. there. Um, if you can have any magical power, what it would be? To create more money. To create more money? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> are you living your American dream? Definitely. More, right I would now. say, yes. So, guys, be patient. Be always believe in yourself, yeah. as Max did it. And American dream, it's very possible. Here yeah. we have a Max. He's living and American dream. it starts with dream. you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Max. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Thanks uh, so I much really for I really enjoyed our interview. Yeah, absolutely. It was okay. great having you here, too.